In Chapter 2 of Form and Forces by Edward Allen and Václav Selesky, a cable structure is introduced that is analyzed by graphic statics. And so what I'd like to do here is go through the process of that example in order to make it very clear as to the steps that you go through in this type of analysis. As you'll see, it's incredibly simple to apply graphic statics to a cable structure. So let's have a look at this example from the textbook itself. The cables are arranged in parallel lines. Let's do a plan diagram of this. So each of these represents an individual cable. And we'll put some column lines on this. Each of these are spaced at a distance of 20 feet. So this is a cable. Then we have another line down here. <coughs> and the entire length is 180 feet. So this is not to scale here. There are hangers that are arranged on this that also are at 20 feet. Again, not to scale, just for reference. So this is a plan diagram. Then we have elements that are spanning horizontally to the cables. and each of these is carrying the load. So any one suspension element is therefore responsible for carrying a tributary load. And these again also are 20 feet. So the tributary area here is 20 feet by 20 feet, or 400 square feet. So the total load on any one of these elements is the load, which is given as 60 pounds per square foot. That means that we take 60 pounds per square foot and multiply that by our 400 square foot cross-sectional, our, our 400 square foot plan area, tributary area. And we are left with 24,000 pounds. or 24 kips. So that's where these numbers are coming from. That's one postulate in this. The other is that we're designing for 245 kips maximum load. So this is given by the uh, 2 and 1 8 inch diameter cable. This is the capital Greek letter phi, means diameter and it's capable of safely carrying 245 kips. So a couple of concepts that are important to understand here. One is that if we take a line that goes from end to end, this is what we call the closing string. And the closing string, one of its properties is that when we draw a funicular polygon, the closing line, this closing string, will not only join the endpoints, but it also will divide the left and right vertical reactions in two. So 
So if we have a spanning element here, not a cable, but if it's a truss or a beam or something, there's going to be a vertical reaction on each end that depends on the magnitudes of these loads. Now if these are all equal of whatever value, these are also going to be equal as well. I'll call these equal to because it depends on how many of those there are, but they are the same on each side. If these change, if this gets higher over here, then this reaction is going to get higher. But the closing string has this property of showing us what the magnitude of that reaction is. We'll look at that separately in other videos. But right now we're talking about equal values for loads meaning that the closing string is going to divide the load line exactly in half. So this is already constructed here for us. This is a value of 24 kips at a scale of 1 inch is 60 kips. That's a 1 to 60 scale on an engineering scale. So we're working off of this scale right here. Now the cable is uh, sized for a maximum force of 245 kips. That means that the longest line we can have here is 245 kips. One way can, we can go about that is to actually set our scale or set a dimension so that that actually becomes our maximum. So here with this um, compass, here's 245, or 240, 250, 60, 70, 80, so here's 245 is right here. I'm going to set this exactly to 245. And then if I take my extreme ends of the load line, pass an arc through the closing string, I can see right off that a line that would go from A to point O is going to be longer than 245. If I use J to O. This would actually be something closer to about 50, 60, about 265 kips. So that exceeds the maximum allowable force on the cable. Therefore, this one has to govern. I can't use the one up top here because that would make this one longer than 245 kips. So the amazing thing here is that the construction of a funicular polygon comes right from this force polygon with the closing string, closing string being the line that's parallel to the stop and start points of the funicular polygon. We take that line parallel to that line, bring it down here. We split this in half, so this right here would be our right vertical and this over here, our left vertical, as we talked about right here. So we split the load line in half. Next we want to divide the line, load line with rays that are parallel, or not parallel, but intersect this point O. That issue from point O out to each of the points on our load line. So these lines correspond to forces in a cable and as we know from graphic statics the form of the force polygon corresponds to the form of the form diagram. So let's start by transferring lines back. So these are vectors that represent the forces in members here. So I'm going to get the angle of the member off of the force vector starting at point A. And then one by one work my way across the diagram
So make sure you don't get lost on this. And there is our cable. The maximum of member force is in segment OJ, which is at the very end here. So this is 245 kips. The force that's actually in the opposite side scales to about 230 kips. And then it varies in between with a minimum at the middle. So it looks like EO comes out to about 210 kips. And it gets higher as we go up on the string. Now this tension that exists here, if we look just at this joint, body diagram in this joint says that we've got a tension force here of 245, 245 kips. It's being resisted by a compressive strut and a tensile backstay. Now we can find the force the, the um, magnitude of forces in these right from the geometry. We already know 245 kips is the load. We know the angles of both of these. Therefore, we have enough information to complete the triangle. Anytime that you have the length of one side and an internal angle, you can complete the triangle. So the book actually uses the line here. I'm going to redraw this at a new scale. Let's do this at a 1 to 10 scale. So I first off want to get this line back here. So what I'm doing is taking this, I'm looking at the equilibrium of this joint right here. So it's 245. It's 250. 245 would be right about here. So this is my first vector. And I simply want to make this a closed polygon. This is the line of action of the compressive force. And this is the line of action of the tensile force. And we can see we've got a closed polygon. Follow the line, the arrowheads. We know this is 245 kips. Tip to tail. That means this is a tension force. Tip to tail. This is going to be compression. The reason it's compression is because the direction is pushing upward towards the joint. This is tension because it's downward away from the joint. And so the magnitude of the tension and compression, tension comes out to approximately 125 kips. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 1 to 10 scale. Comes out to approximately 205 kips. And in compression, the mast has about 280 kips.
And that's how we solve for a cable structure. It's pretty amazingly straightforward when you understand the step-by-step -step procedure. That's all for now.